Hi, everyone. Hi. Well, thank you for uh, joining us here. This is fun to be um, on a, at a roundtable. I haven't been in a roundtable yet. Um, and uh, yes, G for Scene, let's let, learn, let's do this. Um, <laughs> but I'm excited to be talking to you, you all in this format with some of my amazing colleagues here. Um, so over the next 50 minutes or so, we're going to share uh, some information about our educational programs, our learning initiatives, how we are expanding our work to serve more educators and students and, and people seeking professional development um, within the games uh, space uh, and give my colleagues an opportunity to talk about different programs that they are running. So quick rounds of introductions first and then I'll jump in. Um, so I'm Susanna Pollack, I'm president of Games Change. We have Arana Shapiro, who is our managing my, director. <laughs> And um, uh, and also our chief learning officer, right? Um, Tanya, I'm going to introduce yourself. Sure. Hi, I'm Tanya Hack. I'm the senior director of programs at Games for Change, um, and I've been here for about seven years and running our youth programs um, for the last five or six years. Yeah, awesome. Hey, Marissa, I'm going to introduce yourself, please. Okay. Hey, um, hi everyone, I'm Marissa Hartz. I'm the Director of Operations and a Program Manager at Games for Change. And the programs that I pretty much work on are all of our learning programs that you are gonna hear about in just a little bit. <laughs> Great, and the newest member to our team, uh, Dalton Gray. Hi everybody, thank you so much, Susanna. My name is Dalton Gray. I am a project director and game designer at Games for Change. Um, and I am so honored to be on this team, getting a chance to learn from and work with all of these amazing people. Oh, thank you, thank you. All right, so we're gonna, I wanna dive in and give you guys some context um, as to why we're having this conversation now and why are we starting a new initiative um, at Games for Change. Uh, so, I mean, in many ways, what we're, what, what we're really trying to do is, is put the work that's emerged over the past year and a half, well, it's been slowly building over the last five or six years, but we saw this tremendous amount of work in the educational space, space just kind of exploding the last year and a half, which none of us could have expected um, to happen. Uh, as I mentioned in my opening remarks, you know, we, you know, we entered the pandemic, like so many of you who are educators or who work in, uh, the not-for-profit sector, really any sector, you know, she didn't know what the, what was what the pandemic meant for your industries, for your work, for your for connecting with kids, and for us um, working, having uh, uh, one of our flagship programs, the Games to Change Student Challenge, um, where we were working in four cities, reaching you know thousands of kids, working with hundreds of educators, like how we're going to run this program, and I have to say our team uh, that was led by Tanya and Marissa's on that team and Steph. They just did it's a remarkable job and reimagining this program to be a virtual program. And, you know, over that, that period of time, managed to not only manage attrition and people dropping off, but watch the pro and help watched and helped the program grow. And we saw educators turning to our program and saying, this is the kind of program that we need to keep our students engaged. Um, students were coming back to it. Um, it just, it, it was, you know, a little, a little surprising um, just because we didn't know what to expect. And alongside that, we were having more opportunities um, to pull out learnings that we um, had, had been making over the last several years about why games are effective uh, tools in education, not only for students, but also in professional development opportunities with educators. Um, so while well, something that we started six years ago with our very first Games for Learning Summit, if anyone was there at that event, which we hosted with the ESA and, um, and the Department of Education, please uh, put it in the chat because that really started our journey in this. And we realized that Games for Change can play a role in helping um, leverage games in the classroom and helping with that adoption. Ron, that's amazing that you were there, right? Like it was it was kind of, you know, unheard of at the time to bring the game designers and the educators together in the same room. We had, I remember having Assassin's Creed and Ubisoft there, you know, Ron, other people who have been, 
really in in the field advocating for this, but we also had the Department of Education, right? Um, who were there? Ed Metz was there, and at the time it was Richard Culotta, who's now at ISTE, right? Like it was a big turning point for us. Steve, you were there too. That's awesome. And that was the same year we started the student challenge. Um, and we were invited by the New York City Department of Education to create a, a program where kids um, were were given an opportunity to do a competition. First, it started off as a competition, a game making competition um, that was modeled after like Scholastic's um, poetry competition or a filmmaking competition. But as we dove into it, we realized that kids didn't know how to make games. We couldn't assume that there was a basic understanding of knowledge. So we had to um, create, a, create a curriculum. Um, uh, and at first, we partnered with others on a curriculum. And then in the last year and a half, when we brought Arana and her team on board, we started uh, focusing on our own curriculum. And this is the program that now has been running for six years. Um, and Tanya will talk about it a little bit later. But from that, we had opportunities to expand that program into museum education, to uh, opportunities to develop an international version of the program um, in uh, foreign countries. And Dalton will talk to you about that. Um, and we also realized that we we're building a network of educators that have been going through our programs. Um, I think we've, we've, that we've trained over 550 educators on our student challenge alone. Um, and we were becoming like this nexus, this hub for the games industry and the education community. And, and you know, it's because of partnerships like with Epic Games. Um, Steve, you you know, you're you're this this predated you, but you were a big part of it from the beginning too, right? Like of how we can help bring game design tools and and 3D tools to educators because we already we we have a, a group of educators that are hungry for more information. So there's more um, so there's more opportunities there that we are doing. And now we ran workshops this past week, which Dalton is leading. So there's just so much going on, and we really. Really felt that it was time to put it under an umbrella, which was a G, what is G4C Learn. Um, another big move that we made a few years ago was starting bringing over the talented folks who were formerly at the Institute of Play, who we partnered with for years. And you know, while we were really sad to see uh, that organization uh, organization sunset, it gave us an opportunity to continue that amazing work and start bringing that work into Games for Change. So Arana first came back, came over. Gosh, it's going to be two years in a couple months. Two years ago, I know she works with a number of um, a curriculum uh, developers um, kind of on a, a contracted basis. And now Dalton is part of our team full time as well after facilitating with us, right, on Game Jazz for a number of years. So we, we're just growing this amazing capacity. And we're really excited and we feel like this is just the beginning. So we want to share with you more about the programs. If you are an educator and you want to get involved, we're going to offer you links on how to do that. If you're in the museum community, you want to get involved. If you are a game designer and you want to mentor, there are so many different ways to get involved in the organization within G4C Learn. Um, so hopefully we'll give you all the right links, but if not, please, you know, uh, state your interest like here um, in the chat and we'll uh, try to find ways to connect you with the right member of the team. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Arana, who's going to talk a little bit more on the kind of overall pedagogy and, and what we feel like we've been learning within uh, our work in this space. Arana, over to you. Awesome. Thank you, Susanna. Yeah, so like Susanna said, we are, you know, really um, hoping that we're able to create this kind of umbrella that is G4C Learn that will invite more partners, more youth, more educators kind of into the Games for Change world. Um, and so there's lots of different ways that, that we can do that. There, some of them are real formal programs that, um, that you know, that run, that run multi-year over course of, of of years, some are one-off workshops, but no matter the size or kind of scope, we're really hoping that we can create this this large community of educators who can move with us throughout our journey into different um, programs, working with different technologies and trying new things. Um, so like Susanna said, I'm gonna talk just a little bit about kind of what what we've, We've learned a lot from our work with kit, with youth and educators, and we've form we've formalized it into some um, kind of key ideas that 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 will um, kind of connect all of our learning programs uh, underneath this umbrella of G4C Learn. Um, so I'm going to talk about those four key ideas, and then you're going to hear from Marissa Dalton and Tanya, who will talk about specific programs and how those ideas have come to life or will come to life in years to come. 
Um, yeah, so, so the first big idea, which should be no surprise, is that we really believe that learning should be playful, right? And that it is our kind of, it, our, our pedagogical stance is that we are designing playful learning experiences. So workshops, whether they're for students or educators are really rooted in the principles of, of play, right? So they're hands-on, they're collaborative, they're fun, they're engaging. Um, and so you really like, we really are striving to create experiences for adults and kids that, that are um, enjoyable and that they want to come to and be a part of. Um, the second kind of key idea is around the integration of, yes, STEM skills, because we do believe in those kind of hard skills that game design can um, afford to both educators and youth, but also SEL skills, right? So that there's this bringing together of the STEM, the hard and the soft, if you will, right? The STEM and the SEL. So that games and game design have this potential to drive interest and engagement in computer science and STEM fields, but they're also very powerful for activating 21st century skills such as collaboration, communication, problem solving, and systems thinking. Obviously, this is not like, a, for the people in this audience, this is not a new concept, right? We all know that games are really powerful um, and game design is a really powerful way to activate these skills, but, the, but for us, it's really important that yes, the STEM skills are really important, but so are the SEL, right? So they're on the same level and they're, they, they sit hand in hand in importance in our programming. Um, the third key idea is this idea around creating um, environments, whether they're online or in person, that feel safe and inclusive um, and that really value trial and error. So we believe in meeting learners where they are, adults and youth alike, right? So, so our programs are flexible enough that when we're running a program for museum educators, it makes sense for museum educators. When we're running a program for teachers, it makes sense for teachers. When we're running a program for high school teachers, something may be different than if we're running a program for middle school teachers like we really want to take the audience into account and make sure that we're creating environments that meet the needs of the learners that are there and we all of our workshops all of our programs encourage trial and error through active play testing and experimentation so it would be impossible for us to say that we're rooted in the principles of game and game design if we didn't encourage failure and learning from failure and play testing and experimenting and trying new things. And so that is really at the heart of all of these programs. And the last piece that is at the heart of all the programs that will be a part of this Games for Change Learn brand is the idea is impact, right? We really wanna increase impact. And, and to do that, you know, we, we believe in a train the trainer model. So a lot of our program, or all of our programs actually have an element of, um, our youth facing programs all have an element of, um, of teacher training that's attached to them, right? Because we believe that we can, if we focus on training the trainer, we can make an impact beyond an individual student or beyond an individual educator, but that that impact can kind of sort of be exponential. Um, and and really, you know, for, for our work with educators, we're really, um, we're focused on, you know, it, there's a lot of things that will fall under this brand. One of them are these, Susanna mentioned, like the, the workshops that we did in partnership with Epic Games around Fortnite Creative or Unreal Engine. And, you know, we, we believe in those tools and we want teachers to be using those tools in the classroom, but we also believe that understanding how you could use those tools in ways that can drive engagement for kids can transform teaching practice. And that's really at the end of the day what we're really interested in doing and seeing how we can help teachers transform their practice so that they use tools like games and game design in ways maybe they couldn't have imagined, but that they sort of um, infuse what they do on a regular basis. So they use them in the program that we're running but they also find themselves kind of um, encouraging students to play test in other in other parts of their their teaching practice encouraging students to make mistakes to fail to collaborate to communicate to think systemically that those kinds of bigger ideas can infuse practice beyond the the one-off program that they're they're running um, so those are the kind of big ideas and what we hope that the g4c learn umbrella will um, will bring to the table. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to I'm going to start to share my screen so that I can show you some slides but also turn it over to Tanya who's going to talk specifically about the student challenge and how those ideas have have been drawn out of the student challenge really and then Marissa and Dalton will talk about how we've seen those ideas come to life in into other programs that we're running. And then we're going to have time for some Q&A at the end so we're happy to answer 
any questions that you might have. So with that, I'm going to get the screen sharing going, but Tanya, I will let you start. Great. Um, so I'm going to be talking uh, just for a few minutes about uh, the Games for Change Student Challenge, which is our flagship youth program. Um, we've been very devoted to it for the past uh, six years, going into our seventh year um, this year. And um, as Arana mentioned, it's really um, you know from this from this single program that many other uh, of our many other initiatives for youth have kind of grown, um, and and it's really allowed us to. Uh, broaden our impact, um, expand it into uh, new countries, um, into, into places beyond just kind of in school and after school programs. Um, so as Susanna mentioned, the Student Challenge was started in 2015. Um, since then, I think Arana, you could probably go to the next slide. Or back one. So, um, so what, what the program is, is a game design program and a competition that, comp that combines students' passion for video games with digital learning opportunities and civic engagement. And, um, you know, we all know that students and kids are playing games, that they love games, and through this program, we're really you know, equipping them with the skill sets and the knowledge, um, you know, to be creators of games and not just consumers of games. Uh, we also partner each year with a, a set of social impact organizations. Um, and each year we identify a few themes that students will learn about throughout the year. And ultimately, uh, students will create games around these themes. Um, and submit them to our competition. So, Arana, do you want to go to the next slide? I'm not sure why this is not showing up um, so well, but um, here we can test my knowledge of, of the program. Um, we have, uh, over the last six years, made a pretty significant impact. Um, we've trained almost 550 teachers throughout the country We've expanded the program from New York City, where it was born, um, to seven other cities throughout throughout different um, you know periods. This year, we will likely be in in six cities, um, five or six cities: New York, Los Angeles, Atlanta, Detroit, Pittsburgh, um, and a couple of others that that are possibly on the table. Um, we have reached 35,000 students. Um, we've reached them through in-school and after-school game design courses, which are run by cohort educators that we train at the beginning of the year. Um, they also, students are also attending game jams and workshops on the weekends. Uh, and they're also participating in the competition. And those aren't necessarily um, students that are, that are coming from um, our in-school program. Um, those workshops and events are open to all students uh, in that particular city, and that's one of our, you know, main ways that we are able to kind of expand the program to reach more students in each city. Uh, we have hosted 59 uh, game jams and a total of actually 61 workshops. Um, which feels like a lot over over the last six years. Um, of, of course, the last over the last year, we've shifted those events um, to being virtual, and we look forward to to going back to um, to the live events this year, um, or hopefully this year. Students have created nearly four thousand games that they've entered into the competition. Um, and that's a gigantic number. It continues to increase every year. And if you if you haven't um, had an opportunity to play some of the games that 
that students are creating for our competition. Um, I highly recommend that, uh, that you check out some of the student games. We currently have a finalist arcade live on the Student Challenge website. Um, and you can play um, any of the, I think, 40 finalist games um, from this past year's competition. So, next slide, Ron. So, in terms of the program timeline, um, you know, we recruit teachers at the beginning of each year, um, and we host uh, teacher PDs in each of the cities where the program um, is running this kind of in-depth, in-school, and after-school program. Um, as Arana and Susanna both mentioned, we use, um, you know, a, a train-the-trainer model so that we're actually uh, developing, you know, capacity in schools for, for teachers to continue um, to teach programs like this or this program moving forward. Um, so we're building uh, capacity for them to, uh, to teach coding. We're building capacity for them to teach um, design and, and STEM um, and a whole bunch of other um, kind of disciplines as well. Um, we, we also, I, I should mention before I get too far along here, um, and another aspect of this program that's been very special is the emphasis that we've placed on partnerships um, at every level and at, within every component of this program. Um, there are a substantial number of partnerships. Um, so at the city level, we rely on uh, anchor partners who are super familiar with the local landscape and can help us uh, facilitate the program locally. Um, we also are able, are very committed to offering this program uh, for free um, and reaching um, underserved students. Um, actually, 80, I think 82 percent of our our schools were Title uh, One schools this past year, and we're able to do that with funding um, both at the local level and at the national level um, from. Uh, from family foundations, from uh, corporations, um, and a whole host of other uh, funders. Um, so after uh, Teacher PD takes place in the fall, uh, we have game design courses that run uh, in schools, either during the school day or as part of an after-school program. Uh, we have mentors who are professionals um, working in technology or in the games industry who actually go into our cohort schools and work with students in a very hands-on way. Um, and, and their role is really to, um, to help students connect to their coursework to future opportunities, um, career opportunities, higher education opportunities, um, and to really help them see kind of the bigger picture um, and what they're doing. We also, as I mentioned before, we host game jams um, on the weekends and uh, and other workshops. Uh, for example, this year we brought um, a, a writing component into this competition in partnership with the New York Video Game Critics Circle. And so this year we hosted a series of workshops around uh, video game journalism as well. Um, the professional development with teachers continues throughout the year, and we offer um, ongoing opportunities for teachers to come together, either through office hours um, or a teacher meetup that typ typically takes place halfway through the year. Um, we also, uh, a big emphasis, uh, as Arana talked about a little bit of this program, is around 21st century scale growth. And so that's something that we're measuring um, really from day one of each of each school year, um, and you know it's it's proven that uh, that game design and and game playing are you know effective ways to to grow twenty first century skills, and um, you know when you when you start combining collaboration and creativity and problem solving with um, kind of the civic engagement piece 
we're really setting students up to um, to be kind of 21st century uh, game designers, and um, we're really setting them up to be successful in in a host of, of ways, not just in their in their game design um, you know pursuits or passions, but really um, in, in terms of these kind of bigger life skills. Uh, Everything culminates for this program in a competition. Um, it's a way that we help keep students motivated and on track, working in teams. Um, it really gives them something to work towards. And we found that um, the competition has been a very exciting way to, to engage students. Uh, we invite partners and mentors and other industry players into the competition judging. Um, this year we had, I think, 215 um, professionals actually evaluating the student games. Um, so it's, it's a mass, massive undertaking. It's been growing every year. Um, and, and we celebrate all the accomplishments um, at the end of each year with a big games showcase and uh, a series of award ceremonies which take place typically in each of our challenge cities, but this year um, took place online. Um, and if you're super interested in, in watching our award ceremony, it's available on our YouTube page. I'm going to jump in just really quick, uh, mm -hmm. Tanya, because the, the award ceremony and the competition is so special. Um, we have been um, running these in person. Typically, when we do them in each city, we hold them at a cultural institutions so what feels super special to the kids we have a we have an our physical arcade of all of our finalists families friends classmates are invited to come we've had it held at the new york public library at the smithsonian museum at the uh intrepid museum at parsons school of design like it's super celebratory um and um and produced really well right like that also is great for the kids because they can see themselves they get you know they come onto stage they get interviewed by somebody they see their video like all that celebration is really really important and as tanya said that most of the participants in in this program are from title one schools and if, if you're you're from outside the United States what that means is that the school can qualify for uh federal uh funding for free or reduced lunches which means they're coming from um often underserved communities. Um, so it's a really diverse audience that, that, that is coming through this program and it's you know, incredibly rewarding for them to see, you know, just to see for the first time that they're actually not only recognized for their work, but this actually could be a career for them. Like that, you know, that's a big part of it for us as well is seeing that there's, there's even a potential pipeline into the industry. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to like emphasize how, how super special the, those events are. Sorry, Tanya. Right, and and just the fact that there really aren't a whole lot of opportunities for um, you know platforms for students to to showcase this type of work at this age level. So um, so our program really does offer that in a very special way. I think we going? might have to move on, Tanya. Yeah. I don't know if that's your last slide. That's yes, my last slide. Yeah. Um, so. <laughs> Um, so we have a couple of kind of forms here. I can drop links into the chat so everyone can access them. Um, we're starting to recruit teachers this month for the upcoming year across all the cities that I mentioned before. Um, students should hop into our website and check out um, Games for Change's new intro to game design curriculum. Um, and if you're interested in um, and really diving into this program and, and learning more about it and exploring what a partnership might look like, um, you can send us an email and we would love to hop on the phone with you and, and talk more about it. So thank you, Tanya. Um, a couple questions popped up here and I want to um, address them now, shall I? Should we hold off? I'm gonna address some of them right now, Dalton, because I think, uh, but thank you for tracking the, the questions. Um, we are growing this program uh, so that teachers and students from outside the core cities that we operate in can participate. One of the things that we uh, invested in this year in terms of time and resources is a uh, curriculum, a downloadable PDF version of our curriculum 
that can be accessed for free on our website. And we have a teacher facing one and we have a student facing one. We also have a museum educator facing one. Those are free and you can access, access them right now. Um, we do plan on offering some professional development for teachers who want to go through our training process. Um, we, were, we are not likely to be able to support them though with the full program in the way that we support them in each of the cities. But we are looking to offer professional development to at least get these get uh, teachers up and running with the program. Right, we teach them how to do um, how to learn about early game design concepts, how to use Scratch, and then all of the specifics about the curriculum. So we do hope to uh, we will continue to do that. And if you register any kind of your interest, um, even if you are from outside of our core cities, we'll we'll note that and make sure we get in touch with you when we offer those uh, that training. And lastly, uh, Dalton will talk about the opportunities if you're outside of the country to participate. We hope that will be growing. We're, we're testing the waters over the next year or two, um, but we do see huge potential there as well. Um, so I think Marissa is next, right? Um, and are we talking about game plan next? Yes. Um, so I'll I'll lead you in on this. Are, are you talking at all about I, IMLS? Do you give that part of the story? Not really. So if you would okay. like to. <laughs> yeah. So let me just back up because this is, this is interesting. So oh, like two years ago, we received a grant or yeah, probably two years ago now, from the Institute of Museum Library Services. Um, it was a national leadership grant, and it is an ex and it was it, we were invited to initially expand and adapt our student challenge program to live within museum education environments. That was the original grant, um, and we were starting to work with a small cohort of edu of museums, uh, eight museums, two in each of the cities that we were operating in. So two had been in LA, two in New York. Uh, D Detroit and Atlanta, and then COVID hit. And we had barely got started before the pandemic closed all the museums down across the, the country. And we had to pivot, just like we had to pivot with the student challenge, we had to pivot with this program too. And what, and Arana and Marissa, who both uh, led the program, ended up with something amazing. Like it, it was just incredible learnings came out of it. And with the support of IMLS, which is the acronym, we expanded the program. So rather than shrink it and postpone it, they said, all right, now COVID is, now, now that we see the museums really need to figure out ways in which they engage with their communities, even if it had, even if it's solely going to be digitally, why don't we expand your program? And they expanded it to 20 museums and we opened it up around the country, right? And then we, they expanded it a second time and I think we're going to be opening it for another 20 museums for another cycle that's going to start in September. So I think what Marissa is going to talk to you about is what happened right this past year and what what museum educators can expect for the coming year if you're interested to participate. How was that, Marissa? Was That's perfect. Okay, <laughs> you, you sold it. Um, yeah. So um, just to give a a little bit more. Um, of a description of what this program is. Um, so Game Plan is a two-year national leadership grants for museums initiative to integrate game design into museum education programs, adapting methods and materials from the G4C Student Challenge, which Tanya just went over. And it's one of my favorite programs too. Um, so the goals of this program, Game Plan, is to provide professional development to museum educators related to game design, forge a community of practice, strengthen museum ties to communities and improve learning outcomes for youth. Um, and as you know, we've all experienced over the past year and a half, almost two years now, um, museums have faced all types of disruption, um, whether their facility, facilities actually closed, if they had to shift to a virtual format, you name it, they probably experienced it. Um, so now museums are, you know, being challenged to find different ways to connect with their communities, um, especially within this COVID-19 pandemic that we're all experiencing. Um, and, you know, they're fo we're focused on basically um, reaching populations that are most impacted by this crisis, um, usually underserved youth in those communities. Um, so yeah, I'm going to talk just a little bit about um, the core components of the game plan program and what um, we provide from Games for Change. So um, we provide an open application to the program now to all museums across the U.S. and we form these learning cohorts. Currently right now we have a cohort of 
um, 40 museums. Um, and uh, the program is going to wrap up very soon, um, next month to be exact. Uh, we also provide downloadable materials for museum educators and students for home learning and game creation, um, specifically that free curriculum that um, was mentioned earlier, the Intro to Game Design. Um, we also provide virtual online professional development training for educators, and we provide a platform to virtually connect and forge these communities. Um, I think I think Susanna mentioned it, but if she didn't, uh, we use this web-based platform called Participate, um, which is super awesome. Uh, different forums, ways to ask questions. Um, educators are easily able to access all the resources that we provide at PD, including videos and chat logs and just you name it, Participate probably has it. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much the game plan um, program in a nutshell. Um, but I'd love to um, go over a few um, of the key facts um, and statistics that we kind of uncovered over this first year of um, running this program. So um, over 75 museums across the US applied to be a part of this program, and 40 museums were accepted, which includes participants from 31 museums and 18, oh, sorry, 31 cities and 18 states. And just to give you a little idea of the kind of museums that are part of these programs. We have art museums, science museums, natural history, history. Um, we even have a museum um, that operates completely in VR. Shout out to Paige. Um, so it's really great and reaches so many, um, so many folks um, all across the US. Um, we have also trained 81 museum educators in game design and game-like learning in the inaugural launch of this game plan program. We also held three two-day virtual professional developments, um, and so much fun was had, I have to say. You could ask Arana and Dalton. <laughs> they know. Um, so that, that's pretty much the program um, in a nutshell, but um, to really um, talk about how this program connects to the greater G4C Learn vision, um, to mention again, we are all about using the train the trainer model. Um, so in this case, museum educators can bring what they learned in PD and act as leaders in game design for the students they interact with. Uh, we also believe in meeting all learners where they are and strive to provide resources and experiences for youth and adults that leverage their prior knowledge, interest, and expertise. And like Arana mentioned earlier, we are all about making our PDs, our trainings, our workshops, playful, hands-on, and collaborative, while encouraging trial and error through active playtesting. Um, and if I didn't speed through that enough, um, I no, just want to mention one, <laughs> just yeah, one final it. note. Um, <laughs> after launching um, the first game plan PD back in January, um, personally, I really saw how much space there really is to implement game design, play, and game-like learning principles in museum settings. Um, and I really look forward to seeing um, where this pro program's gonna go. And if you wanna learn more or get involved, um, feel free to fill out that general interest form and someone from our team will get back to you. Great. Can you, can you hear me? Can everyone, yes? Okay, so one thing I just wanna highlight about this program. Um, well, we started off focusing on game design as part of our Games for Change Student Challenge. It's moved on. What the program has really kind of morphed into is, is teaching game design principles and game-like learning uh, to museum educators so they can create game-like experiences within the museum setting. And that was a really interesting um, you know, learning opportunity for us as we you know, started off expecting one thing with a program and then uh, through feedback and iteration ended up with this offering, which um, seems to be a really, really good for, with, with the museum educators. Okay, I'm going to now invite Dalton to uh, take the, um, the stage and it's gonna talk about how we are now working in international communities uh, with the student program, uh, thanks to a grant from the U.S. Department of State and the Stevens Initiative. And I will say that even though Dalton is, is um, well, he is running the day-to-day -day of the program, Tanya and Dalton are a uh, fabulous duo in shaping this uh, opportunity because it is a, uh, a big, big program that has a lot of potential. Take it away, Absolutely. Dalton. Thank you so much. So, um, Game Exchange. 
Uh, this program is all about, as it says, raising the next generation of global impact game designers. Essentially, it's taking all of the amazing things that the Student Challenge does around project-based learning for social impact game design, bringing kids together to make games, and adding this element of virtual exchange. Um, so if we go to the next slide, uh, essentially the program is set up around this uh, each round uh, will bring together kids from the US and uh, MENA countries. So our, our funder is particularly interested at the moment in, in Middle East and North African countries. So our first two years, we're, we're just working with Bahrain, Israel, and the United Arab Emirates. And these students will actually be connected in their classroom educators will work together to create game studios where students from the US and students from any of these countries will connect and share their ideas about what kind of games they like to play, what kind of social issues are important to them. And together they'll create everything that they need to make games for impact. Um, this program is super exciting and, and just tying it back to some of these other uh, themes in the G4C Learn brand, right? Like we're talking about SEL and collaboration. Um, these students are gonna collaborate the same way that we've been forced to collaborate. Like what does it look like to collaborate virtually and what tools they're going to need to grapple with to collaborate asynchronously with somebody from a completely different culture, from somebody you know who's are, are literally around the world. Um, so there is such an opportunity here to dig into not only the, the socio-emotional side of collaboration, but literally the technical skills of like putting stuff online and working together. Um, these game studios are, are going to submit games to year-end competitions, uh, just like the Student Challenge. Um, and we're going to be working with middle and high school educators in, in these regions. So in the US, we're working with educators from Detroit, Atlanta, and New York City. Um, and globally, uh, again, Bahrain, Israel, and, and UAE. And we have some amazing partners over there that are connecting us to not only educators, like best-in-class educators working with populations that desperately need this kind of programming, but also mentors and, and true industry. Um, and they're coming to us and asking us, like, how can we create a pipeline to get these students into the game design industry and keep them engaged? Um, so uh, the final point on this on this slide is this alumni network. Um, and, and throughout, we've been talking about this idea of training the trainers. This program creates an opportunity where youth are actually stepping into that role uh, through this alumni network where they can stay involved and continue to give back to the program. And we aspire to, to facilitate and build capacity in youth that go through this program to turnkey it and, and give back and mentor students in the future programming, be a part of our curriculum design team, and really help us make this safe and inclusive representation uh, representative space where they can really shape it and bring their own experiences to it. Um, if we go on to the, the next slide, um, we'll just call out that this program is divided up basically between now and, and 2023. We're going to have four, or the spring of 2023, we'll have four rounds of 10 week virtual exchange where it's going to be a concentrated time where these two classrooms are going to be put together, that we're going through the curriculum, um, getting to know each other, forming their studios. But then each year we're, we're sort of building on this best practice of public product and, and there's this showcase at the end of each year where students from round one and two can celebrate their work and we can uh, sort of call out the amazing work done by our educators. Um, and then rounds three and four will continue that process with another two 10 week virtual exchange programs. Uh, the asterisk here, I just wanna call out. So for this program right now, because we're connecting um, classrooms so intentionally uh, it the first two years there there won't be an opportunity to participate if you're not affiliated with one of the educators that we're working with but in rounds three and four we're creating what's called open enrollment opportunities where any student in these populations could could uh, in these regions could could jump in and be guided by our our mentors and uh, select educators to participate and make games for social impact um, I think we've got one more final slide here. Uh, oh, we can skip this slide. We'll just move on to the next one. Uh, oh, maybe, oh, 
and you've got to represent. But essentially, um, the the call to action here is gamesforchange.org slash game exchange. Uh, this is how you can get involved. Essentially, we're really interested in connecting with middle and high school educators in all of these regions, um, folks who are in industry right now and want to participate um, as a mentor or as uh, a part of this team in some way, uh, local partners, and, and of course, youth. Uh, if you are a student who's gone through the student challenge um, and you're an impact designer, we're eager to, uh, to get connected with you and so your voice can help shape this um, program for the youth that are going to be going through this. Thank you, Dalton. Um, uh, I do want to just point out something that, that is in the title um, as a virtual exchange program. I think it just is fascinating um, how this that game design has can be positioned as a cross-cultural opportunity for kids to exchange dialogue through collaboration in the process of making games. That it's really a platform, right? Our funders are seeing that game design and the act of making games together is a way in which kids can have important conversations about differences, you know, um, about cultural un understanding. Um, and uh, I think it's amazing. One, I do think it's amazing that the Department of State is funding this. Um, to your point, Braun, how do we make sure a program like this isn't Americo-centric? Um, it is being funded through the Department of State. There's no way around that. Um, it is a uh, it is an initiative that is to, that was created to help bridge American kids with kids in in the MENA countries. So that is the purpose of this partnership. Um, but these kids are being placed in equal footing and are being asked to learn from each other. Um, and we have very strong partners on the ground in each of the countries that are um, are managing the program locally. And you know it's it's a it's a peer to peer program. Teachers from Bahrain are being paired with teachers from Detroit, and they're going to work it out with their kids, right? And their kids are forming teams. So, um, so yes, Americans uh, kids are, are are given this opportunity, but it is it is peer to peer learning. Um, but we do hope this is a model that can take off and be and be done without Americans involved, right? Like just like the student challenge, we'd like to see at a certain point where it is dropped into Australia or in Africa or in other cities that it's a, uh, a, a format, right? It's a template that others can run the same thing with this peer-to-peer this -peer opportunity. Um, okay, I think we're gonna pause there. Um, I, we've been talking a lot. I would try to answer questions along the way, but I do wanna leave it open to any other questions that people might have before you depart for other sessions of the day. Um, I don't know if there were any Q&A questions. You could just pose them in chat. Um, while you might be thinking of more questions, I will say that what I would try to say at the beginning is that our g Learn programs are, are, are holistically designed so that we are building community. Like at Games for Change, you know, we are building a community practice broadly. And within g Learn, we see it very much the same thing. Right, and the community of practice is including the educators. Obviously, youth are at the center of this, but the industry is also a big part of this community. Whether the industry, it's partners that have the tools that want to make them available to educators, like Epic Games or Unity, or we're, you know, working with Minecraft at the last student challenge, or it's industry professionals, mentors, who, uh, uh, who want to have and share what they're learning with students. It is very important, I saw this in chat earlier, that students you know, can see people who look like them and understand that this could be a career path for them or they just get sparked with you know, inspiration. So we are always looking for mentors and there's a volunteer interest form that Marissa has that anyone can fill in. And now that we know anything can be done virtually, we can accept mentors from all over the world. Um, we have industry partners, right? Who are providing games and field trips for kids in each of our in each of our cities. So there are just a lot of um, a lot of different ways to get involved um, uh, with with our programs. Um, I think uh, I think that is it. Any more questions? Um, you know, I look forward to sharing back with you next year about how our new programs go. The Stevens Initiative is a brand new program. Game plan. This is the first year we've run it. Um, we hope to continue more educator workshops 
like the ones we're doing with Fortnite and Unreal um, and, and with Unity. Um, and we are building a community a practice with educators. And so we do hope whether it's on, on participate or others that we'll be able to help support you guys um, uh, and, uh, and learn from each other in that peer to peer way. Ted, this presentation was recorded. And in a few weeks when it's put up, uh, it'll be put up on our YouTube channel along with the other sessions from the festival. Um, so with that, I think we can say goodbye. Right, Arana, is my time up? Is our time up? Our time, our is, time, up. time is up. Thank it you, is. everybody. Feel free to get in touch. <laughs> Thanks, Bye. everybody. Bye. Thank you.